I'm Kim Meltzer, Clinton Township Clerk. I've served Clinton Township as their clerk for approximately 10 years. It is not an easy job to do. There's a lot of planning, a lot of logistics involved in elections, and we want to prepare the opportunity for the public so that when you do come on election day, if you come in person, you're confident that the process is easy for you, that you're, you feel welcomed, and you know that your vote is going to count. Um, and that holds true even when uh, folks want to participate in absentee voting. Uh, we want to make sure that you're confident that your vote is going to count. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. I know some of the folks from the previous elections, what's been happening in the media and so on, have concerns about election integrity and security. So this is just really a discussion to talk about that, about how not only in Michigan, but across the United States, really do care about the elections and really do want your voice to be heard. So let's talk about the election equipment that is utilized on election day and in preparation. The vendor that we use in Macomb County is election systems and software called ESNS. Their headquarters are in Nebraska. Uh, we actually contracted with them, and when I say we, Macomb County clerks uh, contracted with them along with the state of Michigan and that is our vendor. There are two other vendors in the nation that clerks have used, and that is Dominion and Hart. So Macomb County chose ESNS to process our ballots and manage our election equipment. Election equipment is maintained on an annual basis, if not more. Um, sometimes we have vendors come in and if there's a new update that's needed, they will come in and update those processes. So some concerns were that, how do we know our machines are working properly? Well, we do have maintenance that is required on an annual basis. Also, uh, we make sure that leading up to election day, we test those machines and make sure that we do that in a public setting. It's called the public accuracy test. And that is announced in the newspapers and in social media and on our website in Clinton Township when we host that public accuracy test. And that's an opportunity for you to become involved and learn how we count ballots and total those ballots and test those machines to make sure we're getting an accurate count. So uh, a lot of folks want to know who are the people that are working the elections, and everyone seems to think that they're volunteers. Well, in a sense, they are. They're volunteers for democracy, I call them, um, but they also get paid for doing the job that they do, and a lot of folks don't realize that. But they do get paid, and it, it, that pay varies from one community to the other. In Clinton Township, uh, we try to be very competitive with our hourly pay. It is a long day. You're there for at least 14 hours. Uh, the polls open at 7 and close at 8 p.m., but you have to be there early to help set up, and then you stay a little bit late uh, to close out those polls. So it's a long day. You're deserving very much so of getting paid for that work that you do, and the people that do work the elections could possibly be your neighbor, your aunt, uh, your sister, your brother, your mother. It's anybody that wants to volunteer, and we are always looking for volunteers to come in and help on election day. We provide training to make sure you know what you're doing. We have made films uh, that you can download on YouTube so that you can watch them multiple times so that you um, can do self-training as well. Absentee ballots are counted starting at 7 a.m. on election day. We keep them in a secure location and 45 days prior to the election uh, ballots are available for the military and then soon after for every voter. So you can come into the clerk's office and obtain an absentee ballot or you can be placed on the permanent absentee list which allows us to automatically send you an application for an absentee ballot. So if you are going to vote absentee, it is a two-step process. First, if you're on the permanent absentee list, you would automatically receive an absentee ballot application. You're required to fill that out and mail it back to us or email it back. You can email it as well. And then we will mail you your ballot. At this time, there is no electronic voting. You cannot vote your ballot electronically. You have to hand fill in the uh, ovals, sign your name on the envelope, and then mail that back. Or you can put it in one of the conveniently placed 
drop boxes. In Clinton Township, we have six locations where that could be. So there's generally a drop box close to you. If you don't feel comfortable putting in a drop box, you can bring that into the township offices. But our drop boxes are emptied every single day and by workers that have been sworn an, uh, an oath to uphold the election law. And so there's security in that. In addition, in Clinton Township, all of our ballot boxes are on township property with cameras uh, viewing everything that takes place there. So should there be any malfeasance or any problems at all that come about, we have it recorded on camera. So that helps to protect the integrity of the election process as well. Election law is not standard nationwide. Election law is governed by state law. So every state has some variation in election law. Although uh, the integrity of the process has to be maintained, the validity of the ballot has to be maintained, and the accuracy, that's true across the nation. But the processes can vary from state to state. And one of the processes I just want to mention is in Michigan is that it requires what's called a secret ballot. The secret ballot means that when you go in on election day, if you're a poll voter, you're going in, you fill out your ballot, and then you hand it to the person at the tabulator, and they take that ballot from you. They take that ballot stub and they tear it off. And the reason they do that is that's the moment where now we can no longer identify your ballot with anybody else's. Then you go ahead and place that ballot into the tabulator and the ballot, your vote is counted. So that's the moment your ballots are counted is when you place that into the tabulator. After that point, when you walk away from the tabulator, we can no longer identify your ballot from your neighbor's ballot or any other voter. So that's one of the things that a lot of folks from Michigan don't necessarily understand. And I want to make that clear so that you know that when you vote your ballot, once it slipped into the tabulator, it no longer is identifiable as your ballot. That's true for our absentee voters as well. Once absentee ballots are submitted on election day, when we take those ballots and place them into the AV counting board, which is the location where we begin to open up those absentee ballots at 7 a.m. and begin to count them. We separate that stub from the top of the ballot and multiple people have to process that ballot because even inside that closed sequester location, we want to make sure nobody knows who voted what on election day. And so that ballot is given to one worker, they open the envelope, then it's passed before they even know exactly what was voted. The ballot's taken out of the secrecy sleeve and the stub is removed. And then that is transferred to another worker so that nobody in that line of processing knows who voted your ballot. And that's the process we use to maintain the secrecy of the ballot. There are two different ways that you can vote a ballot, either absentee or at the polls on election day. Some folks do vote absentee, and when they do, they might vote early, and then by the time election day comes, they forgot, oh, geez, did I vote an absentee ballot? It's fine if they voted an absentee ballot and they've submitted that ballot to us, or if they haven't, they can come to the clerk's office, or on election day, they go to the polls. They can ask the election worker for a ballot, and the election worker at that time will let them know whether they voted already. So on election day, for those voters that want to vote at the polls, one of the first steps in Clinton Township is we have a greeting app, and we determine whether that voter is in the right precinct on that election day. If they're not, we direct them to the proper location and, and uh, send them on their way. However, if they are in the right location, the first step of voting at the polls is to have the voter take out a government-issued photo ID. They give that to the first election inspector, and they receive an application to vote. Then the next election inspector gives the voter that ballot, and then the voter takes that ballot in the privacy of the voting booth, once they're complete, they take it to the tabulator, and then the tabulator receives their ballot and counts their votes, and then the voter is allowed to leave.